Osiris is scary. Confronted with evil, I think that we have a moral obligation to fight the evil. You're not doing enough. Okay, so I have the schnitzel here set up ready and we're going to start rolling it out and we're gonna answer the first question, which is how we're coping with, uh, how we've been coping with the war. Yes, sweetie. Yes, kush, kush. So as you can see, one of the changes is that our daycare doesn't have uh, Fridays. This whole time we don't have the Fridays and we have shorter hours instead of 7.30 to 4. It's been 9 to 3. So, schnitzel? We're going to make schnitzel? Yeah. Okay, great. So that's been a little bit hard. Like you see, we have a little visitor here and it's nice to have some free time. So my husband's sweet potatoes and eggplant is ready. Now I'm gonna put in the schnitzel. Okay, so I have my dough here and I'm ready to start uh, kneading it. I did something that I never did, which is I froze it. I froze it as a chunk. This is about half a kilo. The dough feels great to work with. Um, okay, so we're gonna cut it up. I think I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make maybe four, so it's been a little bit, uh, you know, melancholy. We have a lot of soldiers. We still have kidnapped people that are still, um, you know, on the other side of the fence. It's so horrible, so terrible to even think about it. And I think most of us, we try, we try, you know, we think about it, but we try also not to think about it too much because we really won't be able to function if we were thinking all the time about how they're doing, how they're feeling. You can't not think about what's going on. Recently, someone from my hometown, a brave soldier, talented, young, 24-year-old, I believe, was killed in uh, Gaza. So it's very, very devastating. And it's very hard. My husband's not not in the army. He's not in combat. We were both uh, in the intelligence corps, so we don't. Uh, uh, he wasn't called up, so we've been home this whole time. We've been working. Mm -hmm. I've been getting some nasty comments on some of my videos about. Um, the suffering in Gaza and someone recently wrote that like our army is like the Nazis and stuff like that so obviously you know I'm not offended or anything by these comments I know that we have the most moral army in the world the most appropriate parable is really you live in some building and your neighbor on the other side of the street, him and his kids are throwing uh, rocks at you. And what would you do? What would you do? And that's something that, you know, it's easy to say, oh, you know, people in Gaza are suffering and, 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 and the pictures look bad and they're, they're not, you know, humanitarian, they're not doing well, but like, again, what would you do? A horrific terrorist Islamic organization whose population is behind it, but also used as a human shield and they're throwing rocks at your home. What, what would you do? So it's not, we're not faced with an easy moral situation and I know that if anyone can do it, it's, it's us, it's our soldiers, they're so moral and I'm just so, so proud of them. 
my friend asked someone, what would you do if you had a neighbor like that? And he, he said to her, I would move. I would move out of my apartment building. And it's like, it's kind of like what a kid would answer. You know, I would run away, I would go home, I would go to a different country. You know, I'll just run away from the problem. And I think that we have a moral obligation here to fight evil, not just to run away or say, you know, we can live elsewhere, which, like, practically speaking, we saw that when we didn't have a state, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't great for us, but even if technically I, I could go and move now to some other country and work and have a good life, like, that's not what life is about, and if you're confronted with evil, I think that we have a moral obligation to fight the evil, not just to run away. So I thought that was funny and to, to think like you just, yeah, you just run away. You just, you let the, you let them get away with what they did and you let their ideologies, their dangerous ideologies thrive. Some people ask me at work like, how are your kids doing? How are they coping? So for the first few weeks, we moved in with my parents, um, which was a much quieter area. So they didn't have any rockets or sirens, so they it was um, it was pretty calm for them. But then we moved back. Now we live in the center of Israel near Tel Aviv. So. Um, you know, there were a few sirens. Now things got, got a little bit better, but there were a few sirens, and it affects them. Even if you're super calm, you know, they know that a siren is is scary. Also, especially my older son, asks a lot of questions. A lot of questions about the war. A lot of questions. Who's our enemy, and why do they hate us? And, you know, who's with us? Is Russia for us? Is is uh, Canada, is the US, and you have to think, okay, wait, who, who is on the, uh, who is on our side in the war, and what, what is going on? He, he asks a lot, a lot of questions, so I try to answer what I know. When it comes to the war effort, so some of my friends have husbands that are in Gaza, husbands that are away from north, and they're with three, four kids by themselves at home. And what can you even say to someone like that? She's on her own, managing all the household. Like it, it's so hard to imagine. And what we started doing in our community is giving every Tuesday, giving the families where the husband's away at the war front giving them a meal and this week i was lucky enough and i uh, took part in that we made a pizza dough cheese and sauce to roll out and put right in the oven and they were super super happy and it really warmed my heart to see how you know you can help someone and it could bring joy to their heart and it's really not an easy time for them of course there's voices in my head that say, you know, you're not doing enough. Maybe the dough won't be good and you could have done more and you could have added in this and added in that. And I try to shut these voices out and just focus on doing. If I have something, if I have an idea, if I have a way to help someone, just do it, okay? Even if it's not perfect, even if it's, you could be doing more, do good when you can do good. Another comment I got is recently I had a parenting video and someone wrote, you can talk about parenting while people in Gaza are suffering. Negative comments really don't bother me. 
and I feel completely validated in what we're doing, what my people are doing, what my moral army is doing in dissolving terror. As the war progresses, you know, my mind is clearer to think and talk about other ideas, but of course, that is where your mind is focused on the war and what your people are going through. And so it's not really that easy to create content about other topics, but, um, but I do, I want to continue. I want to continue to talk about Israel, Israeli life, Jewish values. So that was a little bit about how the war's going, how we've been doing. Um, we're very proud of our soldiers. They're doing great work and we're praying for the kidnapped and for the wounded and uh, we'll get through this and we have to believe that you know it's for good and God has a plan and as difficult as these days seem you know that ultimately it'll be for good and good things are coming and will happen so hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up see you next time